All right, we're continuing our discussion about real world assets or RWA on chain, bringing assets, bringing companies, investments, something from the traditional, the, the real world on chain to be able to track it in this, in this uh, global decentralized transparent database that we might call a blockchain that might be Bitcoin or Ethereum or you know, Avalanche, Cosmos, any, any of those. So now we're gonna talk about public companies. And you might say, we already have a system for public companies, why do we need to bring those on chain? But what we've already heard is some uh, someone like NASDAQ is actually looking at the ability to utilize blockchain. We look at several other exchanges that are utilizing blockchain technology or researching or investigating or even building on blockchain technology. So what would it look like or why might we want to bring public companies on chain? And to do that, we, we need to move back a little bit, as always, and see how we trade or how we exchange or, or how we hold shares of public companies right now. And of course, in this instance, I'm talking about shares of, of public companies, you know, Apple, Google, um, th th those kinds of companies. So right now, what happens is if I have an account with a custodian, like a Fidelity or Schwab or something like that, I have what's called beneficial ownership, meaning we'll call it Fidelity owns, uh, they actually have the, you know, certificates, we'll call it. So they actually have the shares. And the reason why they have them is, is this. Now, if I, if I have an account here and I buy in my account, I buy, you know, we'll, we'll call it 50 shares of Apple stock. Fidelity holds all those. So they have millions and millions and millions of shares of Apple stock that, that they're holding. And then if I want to buy them, we, what we don't have to do if Fidelity owns them is go to an, an organization or an entity called a transfer agent and officially make that transfer because Fidelity just has them and they give me this beneficial ownership. So my account is controlling 50 Apple shares at this, at this point. This makes things a lot easier, a lot more efficient for these uh, major custodians so that they can hold on to my shares so that I can buy shares because there's so many people w within Fidelity that, that have these that Fidelity doesn't have to go to the transfer agent and you know go, go to NASDAQ and exchange and, and buy them. I can just buy them in here, they're in my account. This is also very beneficial because let's say I don't necessarily own 50 shares of Apple, but I own some ETF that has 50 shares of Apple in it or something. My ownership is 50 shares of Apple. So it, it makes things much more easy, much more efficient the way things are done now for me to have beneficial ownership. But this means that, you know, technically I don't have ownership. Of course, the contracts are such that if, for instance, Apple were to offer a dividend, that would come through to me. What some of the issues with this are, some of the issues with this current system are, they still have what's called T plus two settlement. Meaning if I buy the shares of Apple today, technically it's a couple days before I actually have them, before there's there, there, that actual settlement. So that might be an issue. We saw where T plus two settlement was a huge issue when we have, when, when we have kind of those meme stock run-ups, when we had the issues with GameStop and AMC, where someone was shorting those and a whole bunch of people went in and started buying and those that were short selling weren't able to get actually get out of their positions their short selling positions because of the t plus two settlement because they couldn't settle those transactions faster than other people were buying and, and bidding up the price so t plus two settlement is, is kind of an issue and it's something that's a holdout and it's something that could probably be changed without a whole lot of issue but we do have t plus two settlement we have this issue of beneficial ownership the other problem the, the other thing that beneficial ownership brings in here is the fact that if i have these 50 shares of apple that are basically just denoted to my account it's not like they earmark 50 stock certificates and send them to me or hold them hold on to them for me they've just said okay an adam's account he controls 50 shares of apple what Fidelity Schwab is technically doing is if someone wants to sell short or something, they're actually lending out my shares. So they lend them. So by virtue of the fact that I, I custody with them, they, they lend out my shares to someone who might want to sell them short. And that's how they make some of their money. That's why we can have uh, zero zero dollar trade free trading fees because all they want to do is hold on to those assets because they can make money by just holding on to them the same way a bank can make money by holding on to your dollars a custodian can make money by holding on to your shares so this is what we you current this is a system we we currently see now it's not a horrible system by any means but as as we see over and over and over and over again in our history 
if the technology is there for us to move forward to a different system, we usually do it. Now, this is in, is in contrast to the way the original financial system was, which was if you had a, um, which was originally self custody, which is where we're back to with with crypto and, and DeFi and such. Originally, we had self custody, which meant that if I owned and I'm not going to say Apple because Apple wasn't around when we had self custody of shares. But if I own, let's say, 50 shares of General Electric stock, I own them by virtue of the fact that I own the stock certificates. They sat in my filing cabinet. And if I wanted to exchange them with someone else, we would maybe meet. There would be an exchange. They'd give me dollars. I'd give them stock certificates. And you owned it by virtue of the fact that you held the certificate. It was a true bearer instrument. We had to go away from that when we had to get more efficient with how we trade, how people are able to trade uh, shares of stock and not that they want to trade in a, in a degen trading way, but some people want to own them. Some people want to buy, some people want to sell, and we have to make that market more efficient. And this is how we did it. We have transfer agents, we have custodians that hold them, we have beneficial ownership, and that's the technology that we built. Now with blockchains, public blockchains, we have the, the technology now to take the shares of those public companies and create tokens, right? And this, again, this is not tokens that this is not crypto asset tokens or anything like that. It's just a share of Apple. But instead of being represented by a stock certificate that's held with a custodian like Fidelity, it could be an Apple token, right? It doesn't look any different. So now here's the, the token version of Apple, and I'll denote it by drawing a circle around it, right? So now we have an Apple token instead of a share of Apple stock. Well, what does that mean? Well, now this token is represented on some blockchain. So again, I'll say it's on the Ethereum blockchain. Here, this Apple token, which is a, a non-fungible, or it's, I guess it's a fungible token. All, you know, there could be billions and billions of Apple tokens that are on the Ethereum blockchain. And what I want to do if I want to buy is maybe I connect my wallet and I say, look, I'm going to, you know, for 50 Apple tokens, essentially shares of Apple. Remember, when we have the Apple token, it's no different than, a, than a, any other security token. We can encode whatever we want in this token, There's, and there will be a standard. Here's what a, pub, a share of public stock looks, for, looks like in a token. It has certain requirements. Maybe it can only be sold to certain people. Maybe only people that, that have certain accounts set up or have gone through KYC within their wallet. I connect my wallet. I prove that I am who I am by virtue of my wallet, and then I can go buy Apple shares. And in this way, Apple or basically anyone else knows which wallets own Apple tokens. That way, if they need to make distributions, if they need to distribute dividends, they can do so just to the wallets that hold those tokens. It can be like an airdrop we see elsewhere. But again, we can encode things in the token such that maybe I just can't, maybe I can't just sell them to anybody. Maybe there has to be a, a KYC aspect. The, the nice part about this also is there's so much more transparency. Right, we can we can transparently see the dividends that, that they paid. Maybe part of what Apple has to do is they have to upload all their financials somewhere, uh, get that data on chain, such that if I have shares of Apple stock, I get to go view that information. Maybe I can use my Apple tokens to vote right now. Voting, you know, being a, a if, if I own shares of Apple stock, I can go vote when they have shareholders meetings. It would be a lot easier if I could vote just using my tokens. If there was something that came out and said, hey, Apple uh, share owners, Apple token holders, go vote on this, and I would go vote, or I might delegate my vote the same way we see with DAOs, right? Not that Apple is going to be a DAO, but the whole idea of public companies is I have shares, therefore I can vote, I can influence what the, what the board is going to do. So again, I can connect my wallet to the Ethereum network. I can say, I want to buy some of these Apple tokens. I transfer USDC. And I now get Apple tokens in my wallet. I can see them. Now, the beauty here is I might custody these myself. Now I have custody. This goes all the way back to owning the stock certificate. And we can do that because we can see the transaction happen in a transparent way on the Ethereum blockchain. We didn't necessarily have to go through uh, some centralized transfer agent that says, yes, Adam bought this. Everyone knows we've encoded the rules in this token. We've encoded the rules that say Adam can go buy this. Uh, and now Adam owns it in his wallet. And now it is mine. I can do with it what I need to do. And, and again, 
going back to when we talked about security tokens, the benefits here is one immediate settlement. USDC went to to whomever was was selling these Apple tokens. I got the Apple tokens. The deal is done, settled when this block settles, which is every 12 to 15 seconds. I now have the Apple tokens, which represent shares of Apple in my wallet. Um, they might have rules again that I can't just sell them to anyone, but it also means that obviously there's this liquid market and this market might be now 24, seven, 365. It means that I can always know the value of my assets because of course I can look in my wallet and go, how much are Apple shares worth right now? Uh, how much is my you know Bitcoin worth right now and everything altogether? Um, I'm learning, I, I have custody of my own assets. I don't have to rely on Fidelity or Schwab or a bank or something like that to custody my assets. I don't have to ask their permission to do anything. I can, I, I can do all that on this public blockchain. What it also increases it, because we've created these tokens, because we've written these rules in here is maybe now I can, I can get loans against my Apple stock. Maybe I can use them as collateral. And again, this sounds really bad. It sounds like I'm trying to uh, have everyone get loans against all these assets that they have. But if I have a significant number of assets, whether that's you know, 50,000, 100,000, a million dollars worth of assets, and some of them are Apple tokens. I mean, right, uh, we'll go in the traditional world. If some of those are Apple shares of Apple stock, investment in a private company, my home or, or, or some sort of real estate or something like that. Most of those assets are not assets that I can get a loan against, right? I, I can't necessarily use those as collateral because it is really difficult for a bank or someone who lends me money to take over those assets at such time as I, I can't make my payments anymore. When you start making these assets tokenized, when you start tokenizing them when you start writing smart contracts and putting them on a public blockchain, now you've opened up the ability that if I don't pay my loan back, the, the remedy for that is whatever entity, whatever group, whatever protocol, whatever loaned me the money can now take some of those back in, in liquidation. So if I pledge 30 of my Apple tokens as collateral and take back a loan, and again, not necessarily for doing anything uh, DGEN like, not necessarily because I, I want to gamble or anything, but let's just say I need money right now. I need to fix the, the roof of my house or I need a, a new car or something. I have more options now that I can use my assets against and maybe that gives me a lower interest rate. Maybe because of this, I'm not using credit cards as much and I'm not going into credit card debt. Maybe I'm not even having to access my credit report or my credit score or anything. It gives me the ability to utilize my financial assets much better when I can collateralize some of them. Same way my, ho my home is collateral for my mortgage, I can collateralize other assets. Now, technically within Fidelity or Schwab, there's the ability to take loans against some of my assets, but I'm asking their permission, I'm getting their money. This is where I can take my Apple shares, just like I can take my ETH or my Bitcoin or something else and get loans against them on chain. I will be able to, to do this when we have public companies that are denoted on chain. We're, we're going to end up with much more efficiency, uh, but probably not more liquidity. The, the liquidity will be the same, but the ability to collateralize and the ability to have self-custody and immediate settlement, that is a huge factor here. Now, the companies, the, the current custodians don't want this, right? Because one of the, the ways that they're earning money is lending out my shares, lending out everybody else's shares. Of course, they kind of, some people, some organizations like the T plus two settlement, it gives them what's called float. It gives them a few days to settle transactions and we wouldn't necessarily have that anymore. But what we would have is a more efficient system. So that's where we see the ability of real world assets on chain and that real world asset might be a public company in this setting. So I wanna talk a little bit about how public companies might be coming on chain, why that might work and why that might make everything more efficient.